in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yermet, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Monday, the 5th of August, 2024, 18th week in Ordinary Time. And today, we keep the option memorial of the dedication of the Basilica of Mary Major, one of the four papal basilicas of Rome. The Council of Ephesus in 431 formally proclaimed the Mother of Jesus as the Mother of God and the Church. The Basilica of St. Mary Major on the Equiline Hill here in Rome was built shortly afterwards to celebrate her motherhood. This is the oldest church in the West that is dedicated to Our Lady. I'm not saying this is the oldest church in the world as in the oldest church but it is the oldest church dedicated to Our Lady. But if we mean the oldest church in the world, we are referring to Lateran Basilica, John Lateran, which is the first church that was ever built and we celebrated in November. The title, Mother of God, may seem technical or even excessive, but it emphasizes the central truth of the incarnation that Jesus Christ was not only a true man, but God also, and not only God, but man born of a woman. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Raymond Zinara, who celebrates his birthday today from Rua, Zimbabwe, takes for us the first reading. Innocent Senga, who celebrates his birthday today from Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of Congo, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Martin Andama who celebrated his birthday day before yesterday, studying in Dublin, Ireland. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, Hananiah, the Lord God has not sent you, and you have made these people trust in a lie. Reading from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 28, verse 1 to 17. In that same year, at the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judea. In the fifth month of the fourth year, Hananiah the son of Azir, the prophet from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priest. And all the people says, Thou says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judea, and all the exiles from Judea 
who went to Babylon, says the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to Hananiah, the prophet, in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. The prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord make the words which you have prophesied come true and bring back to this place from Babylon the vassals of the house of the Lord and all exiles. Yet hear now these words which I spoke in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophet who preceded you and me from ascending time prophesies war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and the greater kingdom as for the prophet who prophesies peace. When the word of that prophet comes to pass, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke bar from the neck of Jeremiah, the prophet, and he broke them. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, says, Thou says the Lord, even so, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nation. Within two years, but Jeremiah the prophet went his way. Sometimes after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke bar from off the neck of Jeremiah the prophet, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, thou says the Lord, you have broken a wooden bar, but I will make in their place bar of iron. For thou says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put upon the neck of all these nations an iron yoke of servitude to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. For I have given to him even the beast of the field. And Jeremiah the prophet says to the prophet Ananiah, Listen, Ananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have made these people trust in a lie. Therefore, thou says the Lord, Behold, I will remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die. Because you have altered rebellions against the Lord. In that same year, in the seventh month, the prophet Hananiah died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsory of Psalm. Psalm 119, verses 29, 43, 79, 18. 9502. The response is taken from Psalm 119 verses 68b. And the response is, Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Give me from the way of falsehood. Grant me mercy by your law. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Never take the word of truth from my mouth. For I hope in your decrees. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Let those who fear you turn to me, that they may know your decrees. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Let my fear be blameless in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Though the weak lie in wait to destroy me, yet I ponder your decrees. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. 
I have not turned away from your degrees. You yourself have taught me. Teach me your statutes, O Lord. Gospel acclamation. Matthew chapter 4 verses 4b. Man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21. At that time, when Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a lonely place apart. But the crowds heard it. They followed him on foot from the towns. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a lonely place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They say to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What is interesting about the Gospel passage we have today is that uh, in every Gospel we find that the feeding of the thousands is followed by the walking on water. And it is a theological message for each one of us. That the walking on water is not a show off on the part of Christ to say, you know what, guys, I'm able to do this. You know, like the way I see some of my friends trying to convince the people who follow them that they have divine powers. So even when they want to show that, they will put it on camera. You see, I can walk in the air. You see, I can do this. No, that is not Christ's way of life. Christ did not do things to show what power he has. He showed things to show what confidence people must have in him and in themselves. 
He did things to let people have confidence in themselves. The disciples, after seeing the feeding of the thousands, got on the boat and started a journey. It is a journey of faith in the mission that lied ahead of them. And on that journey, they were tossed by the winds. They felt helpless. They thought their mission was not going to work out. And they forgot that the one who put them on that boat is the one who fed the thousands. And that one who fed the thousands has power to make them feel powerful. And so he comes walking on water at the fourth watch of the night. When they had crossed the whole night of darkness in the waves and storms of life, towards the end of the night, Jesus came walking on water. It is a resurrection story. It is a story that refers to the labors of our lives, the labors that we go through, sometimes not even feeling the presence of God in our lives. But one thing we must be sure of is that God will come through at the end to tell us we have not been doing anything on our own. He has been there. He just wants us to fortify our faith journey. He just wants us to strengthen our own faith and understand that he is there. And as they were frightened, thinking that they were seeing a ghost, remember this is connected even to the life the Christians were living at the time of the persecutions, they were living in fear. And Jesus said, it is I, do not be afraid. I have had those moments of fear myself. I have had those moments where I feel like uh, there are things not working the way I expect them to work. I've seen storms, but I still hear that whisper. Fear not, it is I. And that whisper should be in your ear right now as you face that storm. The Lord is saying, fear not, it is I. Fear not in that marriage, it is I. I'm going to see you through. I know how stormy is your life in that confused marriage. I know how stormy is your life with those children who have gone astray. I know how stormy is your life with that boss of yours at work. But the Lord is saying, fear not. It is I. He's whispering that to you. And if you want to be like Peter, come out of your fear. Gain that confidence and start walking on water like Jesus. Start stepping on the storms because walking on water signifies defeat of the forces of evil. Start defeating those forces of discouragement. Start defeating those forces that make you feel like the world has ended on you. Start defeating those forces of despair. You are not a child to be in despair because the Lord whom you follow has come to restore your confidence. And he wants you to get out of that boat and walk confidently that he is going to carry you, he is going to hold you. Peter started drowning because he stopped looking at him. He stopped praying. He stopped focusing on his word. He started focusing on himself. We are not enough. 
as ourselves. We are not enough. We need Christ. And Christ is the one who is going to make us stand in our lives. And when we find ourselves drowning, we get back to him and say, Save me, O Lord, for I am drowning, for I am in this situation. Recognize that you are drowning and the Lord will help you out. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Monday to you. Thanks be to God. 